Hello, listeners. Before we get started, I want to note that between the recording of this episode and its premiere, Dustin's company has changed its name. While you'll hear us refer to Pro Unlimited throughout the episode, the company is now known as Magnet. You can learn more about their rebranding efforts at magnetglobal.com. That's M-A-G-N-I-T-G-L-O-B-A-L.com. Thank you and enjoy the episode. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to another HRO Today educational podcast. I'm Elliot Clark. I am the CEO of HRO Today. We publish HRO Today Magazine, HRO Today EMEA, and HRO Today APAC. We're the producers of the HRO Today events held around the world and the managers of the HRO Today Association. Today, we're going to take you sailing onto the ocean, and by ocean, I mean the ocean ocean of data. Everyone in human resources is not only swimming in the ocean of data, we are drowning in it. Today we're going to talk about what tools are available to help you turn all of that data, and particularly your workforce data, into usable information that you can analyze. So I'll come back to that. Today we are very fortunate to have as our guest Dustin Burgess, who is the Senior Vice President of Total Talent Intelligence at Pro Unlimited. So welcome to the podcast, Dustin. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Pro Unlimited, for the people in our audience, is the top-rated provider on the HR Today MSP Baker's Dozen. They've actually acquired Workforce Logic, which was the prior number one organization and had a very high profile in developing technology and data and information services for their clients. That's now part of Pro Unlimited, which is one of the largest providers and now the top-rated provider for MSP and Workforce Services in the HRO Today coverage universe. Dustin is the Senior Vice President of Total Talent Intelligence. He's been there for 14 years, but prior to that, worked for companies like KPMG and Ernst & Young. So a very deep background in the workforce services industry. So Dustin, let's talk about, you know, as I mentioned before, we have this ocean of data and everybody's drowning. Most companies have a huge amount of workforce data, but most have their data in different systems, in different formats. They're trying to coalesce them together using human interventions. It's just not usable. It's not a great solution, particularly as you get into larger and larger enterprises. So what systems or infrastructure is available to make it usable what kinds of data should be in the system? I'm asking you a complex question here. You know, what should be in there? Payroll, attendance, demographic data, et cetera. And then once it's in a usable system, how can that be turned into information that you can make a decision on? So how do you get it into a system? How do you turn it into something usable? And then how do you use it? Dustin, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, it's a it's a big, complicated question, Elliot. As as, as you said, uh, there's a, there's a lot of ways we can go here, but I, but I love the question. I didn't promise you a rose garden, man. I told you this was going to be tough. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, it's I mean, it's highly relevant right now, right? With the labor market being just about as volatile as, as I've seen it in my 14 years in this industry. And as you said, there's just so much data available. But you know, what data is actually driving you know future value for the organization versus what data is just sort of noise? It can be really hard to decipher, you know, and I have a team of about 85 consultants that this is what they specialize in, right? It's helping organizations find data from these various systems. And let's talk about some of the systems for a minute. There's vendor management systems. So, you know, focused on non-employee workforce information. There's HRIS systems and ERP systems, financial systems, and, you know, even badging systems, right? All of these house components of data that can be highly relevant to organizations as they're really looking to develop workforce strategies and talent strategies. And I think the first step really is to just to get as much visibility to the workforce as possible. So, you know, if you think about this, getting full-time employee headcount data, that can be pretty simple for an organization. You know, a CHRO can just basically have someone pull something from an HR system or a financial system to get that. But really wrangling all that data on the contingent side, on the non-employee side can be much more challenging. 
And you really have to know where to look, right? So you, if you have a VMS, that's a great place to start because there's a lot of workforce data there. There's pay and bill, there's headcount information, things like that. Badging data actually is a really great place to go as well to really see who's coming and going from facilities to really get that level of visibility. And then one of the places that we typically will start with our, our clients is just go to accounts payable, right? Get a list of all the vendors that you've paid and all your 1099 payments in the last year. And you can really start to unearth really, you know, what types of vendors are you using? You know, which ones are really focused on providing services and labor? But headcount is really, that's just step one. From there, organizations are looking at different types of data. You know, I mentioned worker pay and bill rate, but as you said, Elliot, there's demographic and diversity data. There's attrition data, which is highly relevant right now, sourcing data, and especially worker performance data, right? There's a new term that I'm seeing bubble up a lot in the industry right now. It's called quiet quitting. And if you're not familiar with that term, essentially what it means is workers are, are more or less doing sort of the bare minimum in their role. Now that they're not going into the office. They're in a much more remote sort of isolated setting. And this quiet quitting is quickly becoming an important item for C-suites, especially, you know, CHROs to really understand worker performance and benchmarking that across peer groups to understand how workers are performing in this new world that we're living in. So those are all different types of data and different types of systems that you might be looking at. And the last one I wanted to call out, because I think it's really relevant, is looking externally. So, you know, I mentioned a bunch of internal systems to get data, but you also want to really have good benchmarking externally as well. And there are a lot of companies out there, you know, my company included Pro Unlimited that provide relevant data to find and price talent, as well as to really benchmark talent acquisition programs, talent strategies, and you're benchmarking across similar types of organizations to what your organization looks and feels like. And that is a critical component when you're really developing these programs is without benchmarking, you don't have that context. You don't know if a, if a number or a performance metric is good or bad. So that really becomes a critical component as well. And yeah, now you, you make a great point though, you know, having your internal data systems is great and being able to get them into a usable format by pulling them together as some technologies are able to do. It sounds like Pro Unlimited is one of the companies that can do that. But you also bring in the external data about benchmarking performance from across, you know, hundreds of companies that, you know, the, a provider, for example, like Pro Unlimited or there are some others that can offer that kind of visibility to not only what's your data but how are you doing once we know it? Great point. Let me just ask, once a company's developed that internal infrastructure, which is complicated, you got to pull out of all the systems you just referenced, put it all into formats that are usable and analytical, and you've got to look at what your productivity is, et cetera. So once you've done that, which is expensive, or you've partnered with a firm such as Pro Unlimited, how can they then incorporate that information into operational decisions that drive business outcomes? Yeah, it's a great follow up. And, you know, once you have all this information at your fingertips, really, that's the next big step is to turn that data into actionable business intelligence, right? That's really where the value comes into play. And whether you're using a third party or a consultant, or you actually have your own internal analytics team, I think the key is to really understand what the data is telling you and analyzing it for future value to the organization. And then the most critical component really is getting the insights and recommendations to the right user at the point of biggest impact. For example, my company provides real-time market rate intelligence to many of the largest organizations in the world to help them price labor in over 120 countries. But the key here is not to get this information just to a procurement team. It is actually to get the information in front of the hiring manager when they're looking to make the hire. And with additional data points such as, let's say, fill times or candidate supply demand information or local area competition, you can actually provide the hiring manager with cost-favorable alternative locations locations, if the work can be done remotely, and you know, really helping to drive faster hires that also result in cost savings for the organization. So the manager's happy and the company's happy. Win-win there. 
Another great way to look at data and really to drive business outcomes is through behavioral analytics. And this is an area that my team and my company, we, we focus on quite heavily with our client base. And essentially what you're doing is you're looking for trends in user behavior to help you identify opportunities where you can improve quality or drive efficiencies. We'll look at how hiring managers are interacting within a program to see, you know, are they using market rate guidance when they're making a sourcing decision? Are they using a competitive bid environment or are they, you know, single sourcing with a with a certain vendor that they that they always use? You know, those types of things really can can drive a lot of value just by understanding sort of who are the offenders that need maybe some education around what are the programs that the company have instituted. Another big one, I think, is predictive analytics. It's been a buzzword in the industry for years, but I, I really think that especially now with the volatility in the market, it's more critical than ever to try and retain key talent. And that's really where you can use predictive analytics to identify potential flight risks either on the full-time or the contingent side, especially when I identify those in critical positions, right? In positions where if you lose that talent, it's going to cause disruptions to the business. And we can actually help triangulate these types of things through turnover trends by department, skill set, job category, location, things like that. And we also will factor in pay analysis by job title and level to really understand you know, where workers might be making less than their peers and might be more inclined to leave the organization. And not only are organizations really taking this proactive approach when it comes to retaining talent, but on the contingent side, they're also doing this to actively redeploy workers that are rolling off of assignment into additional assignments, right? There's a lot of benefits to re-engaging that known workforce. This talent is familiar with your company culture. They know your systems. They probably, they already have badges and have been onboarded. So there's a lot of benefits to really redeploying that workforce. A lot of interesting sort of use cases that you can you can do with this, with this data. And then another emerging trend that we're really seeing a lot of, a lot of our customers are embracing this now is actually they want to receive the data themselves. They want to receive raw data and they want to ingest it into their own internal systems. So they might have a procurement system where they want to bring in, you know, pay and bill information for benchmarking. They might have their own internal analytics tool where they want to pull in performance metrics, things like that. So there's a lot of flexibility now, the way that the data is structured, the different integrations and APIs that can be leveraged. There's a lot of different ways that you can use, use this data to drive value for your company. And, and a lot of opportunity, by the way, to analyze where the needs actually are. Should jobs be permanent? Should they be contingent? These are, you know, complicated decisions. And, and you certainly talked about a lot of the, the use cases. So, you know, let's say a firm has decided they're going to organize and analyze their workforce data and use it operationally in the ways you've just suggested. How do you recommend to our listening audience that they qualify a technology or service partner like Pro Unlimited to make sure you can really do that work? What are the two or three questions that a vendor must be able to say yes to to really be able to do this work? And what do you recommend to HR leaders that they ask before they contract with a partner? Yeah, I love this question because it lets me sit on the other side of the table for a change. And, you know, if I if I were the one asking the questions, I, I think I'd start by just really trying to understand the company's data offering, right? So what is the data made up of? Is it only, you know, internal transactional data or does it include that external market data that we were talking about earlier? Is the company a vendor neutral company or are there any sort of inherent biases in the data set that I'm going to need to factor in? How large is the data set? Is it large enough to absorb anomalies or is there a possibility for the data to be skewed by one data point or in a certain geography just because the data set's not large enough? And, you know, the last piece, which I think is really important when we're talking about the data set is how much QA or, you know, quality control is performed on the data to ensure that it's accurate, it's relevant, it's timely. There's a lot of provide a lot of different data offerings out there. And, and I think the amount of QA, QC that's done on the data varies quite a lot by the different providers. So once I'm comfortable with the data, I think the second part of my question would be how easy is it to consume the data in the way that I want to consume it? Is it flexible where I can ingest it into my own systems? Are there easy to use software solutions that I can use to access and analyze that data? And then does this partner, do they offer you know, consulting and advisory if I either don't have the time or don't have the brain power or capabilities on my team to actually understand and analyze the data the way it needs to be? Because we talked about a lot of different data sets there and you know the, the understanding 
of those different data sets may vary from one to another. So are there services there that somebody can help me really digest and analyze that information so I can then take action on it? And do you have, you know, if you're the vendor, do you have proof points or case studies that really show me that you know how to use this data and you're going to be able to help me achieve my own goals? I'm not always just talking about a short-term savings goal, right? It's really easy to say, yeah, sure, let's cut everybody's bill rate by five bucks an hour. But what does that do to the long-term performance of my my labor? So, you know, really looking at long-term value and balancing that with short-term ROI as well. So I know I threw a lot in there, but the two themes would be, you know, what is the data offering and then how can I consume it? All right. All great points and a lot for our listeners to digest and and understand and a lot that they're really struggling with. You know, some great points about what data needs to build into a system and how to use it and then how to qualify service provider. Because most HR organizations, frankly, are never going to get the reason why organizations such as Pro Unlimited have the services like Total Talent Intelligence is you're never going to get the CapEx internally as an HR department to build out this much software. So, you know, sometimes going with a partner is the most feasible solution. So I want to thank Dustin Burgess, the SVP of Total Talent Intelligence for Pro Unlimited. And as I said earlier, Pro Unlimited is a market leader in not only workforce services, but also in technology around the data and analytics of workforce services. Dustin, so we're going to have you back to uh, give us a lot more advice in the future. And thank you for taking part in the podcast. Really, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was, it was a pleasure. And I want to say thank you to our listening audience for your time and attention. And we'll see you next time on the next HR Today educational podcast.